The bezel was not working properly. So first, I'm going to remove the bracelet by pushing in both ends of the spring bars. This is a genuine 3135 movement. You sound so uncertain in your face. Well, it's not that you're, you're hearing like microphone. He has a different approach. I'm a little bit more patient. Dave was just being extremely soft on the phone. I think it's pretty clear that we collectively made a decision. It's time for someone to go home. Guys, like, comment, subscribe as usual. Let's get back to the video. You sound so uncertain in your face. Well, it's not that you're, you're hearing like you microphone actually, bro. I'm I'm not trying to, you asked me, if, you asked me. I you asked listen, me. Listen, get on the phone right now. Mm -hmm. Say, listen, I will take it at 7,500 right now and I will put the card order over the phone if you are ready. All right. Tensions are flaring. It's your watch, basically. All right, all right. Let's do that. <laughs> 72. You said no. What? Mm -hmm. All right. You have to be assertive. You have to be certain on your price. I was, I was like, that's what I got him. He was at six. He wanted six grand off of that bitch. I said no. So. You know, I, I said 75 at first, and we went back, you know, 7,000 and 72. And he's like, okay, I want, I want you to, you know, check to see who's gonna, you should get 72. You sounded very uncertain. Like the whole time I was listening to you, like you were just like, I think, uh, uh, I don't, it. and then you were still trying to convince him on the watch. Like the guy clearly wants to buy the watch. No, for sure, for sure. But he was. He so told, mm -hmm. it's a matter of beating in the middle and getting the price that's fair. Mm -hmm. So he's at 72. Mm -hmm. You're at 75. Mm -hmm. There's that gap, right? And you gotta figure out how to fill that gap and not let him kind of push you back down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Just be assertive, you know? Don't be afraid to say words like, I will, and, you know, instead of saying, I can, or maybe, or I think, you know? Like, Alex was micromanaging me a little bit on this sale. Uh, you know, speaking to someone on the phone while someone else is miming uh, in front of you, that definitely throws a, a wrench in the, in the cogs of a, of, of a sale. Um, he has a different approach. He's quite gung-ho. Uh, I'm a little bit more patient uh, with my clients. So, so call him back mm -hmm. and say, I'll do 7,200 via wire. Mm -hmm. he, won't, he can't do wire. He needs a credit card. Let's meet at 7,500. You're unhappy, I'm, unha I'm unhappy. Everyone's unhappy, we're happy. Just move along, right? I'm not unhappy. <laughs> I'm not unhappy. The excuse of why he can't pay 7,500 is because he's on a financial constraint. He just sounded very uncertain in the price. Like, in. It, like he, it sounded like there was no confidence over the phone. That, but also the fact that I have Alex here miming to me, and it's uh, it's right. kind of hard to. It's, it, it's not easy. easy. It's like on the phone, and yeah, somebody's and someone's hovering over you. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> many, many easy, times. Yeah. From what I was seeing, Dave was just being extremely soft on the phone. If you're on the phone with a client and they're trying to negotiate the price, uh, you know where you want to be at. You have to have confidence in the price that you set. If you let them beat you up too much, you'll end up selling way under what we want to sell for. So it's extremely important to just be aggressive, be firm on your price, be confident. And just on this phone call, it didn't seem like Dave uh, really had that confidence. So I was trying to coach him a little bit of how I do things. So it's Chris's one year anniversary today. He's right behind us, so we don't want to say it too loud. But we got a Tudor Black Bay in yesterday that uh, it's a Chris one. we got in for, for a very good price. And uh, Chris what, was what all over it. He asked me yesterday you know, if I could purchase it. I was like, just wait. No need to send any type of payment. Yeah, we were in the toilet together. Well, not together, but yeah. sitting separately. Anyway, today is the same. one year anniversary for Chris, so I think it's only fair to get him a nice gift, the Tudor Black Bay. So let's go find it. Is it with Allah? What's up with these $2? Tipping. It's teeping. He said, it is teeping. All right, look here, Natalie. I was just joking. <laughs> it's a Chris Watch right there. It's definitely a Chris Watch. I need a bag or something. Uh, actually, you know what? Give me like a FedEx pouch to make it incognito. Yeah, should we f with and put like a Swarovski ring in there first? All right, guys, listen up. Exactly a year ago, we decided to add a little southern flavor to this company. Lo and behold, we brought on Mr. Chris. For the first, I'm gonna say six months, uh, Chris was assisting Adrian in buying. He's probably responsible for, it's a fair number to say that he's probably bought about six million. Fair, yeah. Then, then uh, we switched gears on Chris and we moved him on to sales. I just looked at the numbers. He did it almost just under three million in sales. And oddly enough, it wasn't just wholesale sales. In fact, more than 50% of his sales are actually retail sales. It leads me to believe one thing. Number one, without a doubt, I can say he is one of the hardest workers here, hence the nickname Machine Gun Chris. The biggest reason 
Chris is so successful, fits so well. Number one, I can't think of anyone that can say, how can you not love this guy, right? I mean, it's just a good guy, right? Oh, not again. Oh, not again. <laughs> Look, Chris, we just wanted to tell you congratulations on your one-year anniversary. You. We're very happy to have you. I think you're a great addition to the team, and I hope that you're here for many more years to come. A little token of our appreciation. Me and Adrian found a Chris watch. We thought you should have this. Thank you. Go ahead, open it. Oh, that's definitely a Chris watch. For sure. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thanks, guys. No problem. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks. So, yeah, I can uh, thank Roman and Adrian enough for this uh, tutor wearing it, having taken it off the wrist. Hard to believe it's been a year. I was working at Lowe's overnight, operating a forklift, unload trucks, and now i am got my dream on some watches. So uh, I'm QCing this uh, lovely 126334, uh, Datejust 41, with uh, Mother of Pearl, aka MOP Dial. I'm QCing, so I'm going through the process of uh, basically ensuring that the watch is in good running and uh, aesthetic order. On top of that, I do like to include a little hand uh, handwritten note. Well, every time I send a watch out, I like to include a handwritten note to let the client know that we appreciate their business and to really round out that uh, white glove uh, service. So I just got some watches from the safe. I have a client who's interested in some gen set pieces and I'd like to get uh, Alex's two cents. So. Mr. Ruiz, yes, sir. please, if I could please pick your brain. So, um, I have a client, he is a, a Belgian gentleman and what he likes to do is he, he likes to, uh, for one, spoil his girl, uh, but I'm looking at pieces that he can maybe spoil himself with. Uh, we do have these wonderful gem set pieces, um, and I wanted to uh, maybe pick your brain and see, you know, uh, what, uh, you know, pieces of jewelry uh, might go well with these pieces for the context. Uh, they're going to St. Bart for uh, New Year's, so um, I'm trying to get in there before Christmas. <laughs> what do you think would be the best? For a, for a woman? For a woman. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite yeah. uh, watches for ladies. I mm -hmm. mean, it comes in different colors, I know, and we've had them in all possibly, all different colors, and I happen to love this watch mm -hmm. for a woman. Just a good looking watch. I love this watch. Mm -hmm. Going from this, this is something I was always interested in, the Mystère, mm -hmm. the Cartier Mystère. You were interested in this mainly because you're a watch guy. You yeah. love watches, you enjoy <laughs> watches. <laughs> this is number one. I mean, mm -hmm. exceptional quality. I think it's limited edition. Also, I, single cut diamonds, exceptional, exceptional quality. They use single cut diamonds uh, mm -hmm. for uh, dials mostly. Okay, okay. It's, it's fantastic. But it depends, you gotta mm -hmm. love this. Mm -hmm. You love it or you don't really love mm -hmm. it. This uh, one here, this is the one I was actually most interested yes. about seeing with you, as I don't know a lot about this, this watch. This is a Piaget, uh, it could even be a piece unique. I because, think. Uh, I, I don't think they made many of these, maybe, it could possibly be the only one that they ever made. And I mean, again. Do you know what the list on this watch would be? Because I know we have oh it listed for a hundred. We have uh, it listed for around one hundred fifty thousand dollars. The the list, I would assume safely. I would safely call it five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand more. So well, that's most likely, thing. most likely more. It's a it's a fantastic looking mm -hmm. watch, but. You have to wear it, right? It's a matter of taste. It's Something a matter of like taste. like this, you don't wear every day, you, obviously. Yes, I think this would be more for like a gala and but evening. It's a, yes. I would put this as a number 10 watch in my collection. I see, okay. You, see, you yeah, follow yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is really interesting. I mean, to me, I am partial. I am partial to this watch. We've had, I told you, like I said, mm -hmm. we've had many of them without mm -hmm. the uh, baguette bezels. Mm -hmm. And we've had them in different colors, red, mm -hmm. green, blue. And the colors are like so deep and bright and it's just beautiful it is it is i like yeah. the, the contrast yeah. between the sapphire and the diamonds and i'm still trying to find where the second hands is on this watch <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not a question that i can answer you have a better luck asking or, roman or adrian or maybe trying to figure it out yourself <laughs> these two are winners in my eyes i'm quite happy with this each stone they have to go through probably mm -hmm. uh 
50 carats of, di of uh, these diamonds mm -hmm. to pick the right ones. Mm -hmm. And most of them still have to be like pre-cut a mm -hmm. little bit to make it like look uh, uniform the way the, the way you know you can see on this watch. Honestly, Alex is a mastermind at uh, jewelry. He's been in the game for a long time. I respect him a lot and I think his uh, opinion is going to be invaluable uh, in closing this deal. Well, thank you so much for your for your help. I do have uh, now some my solid solid options to uh, offer to my client, and uh, hopefully it and works. Good well. luck. And thank hopefully you. Hopefully you do get to deliver it to Saint. Uh, that would be great. <laughs> you'll, you know, you'll see me swimming, uh, man overboard with. Uh... <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Absolutely, thank you. my pleasure. pleasure. These are the two watches that uh, I had Alex's expert opinion on. Uh, now. They're quite beautiful. This, this couple is quite discreet. Um, but uh, if there's one time that you can be a bit extravagant, it's uh, during New Year's. Now, what's beautiful about these is you can wear them, uh, obviously, in a different context, but uh, uh, they definitely are, are magnificent. And it was just really nice to see Alex highlight just the uh, workmanship and the craftsmanship and just really the exceptional quality. And now I'm going to try and convey the exceptional value. RM29 Le Mans. A watch that came out in 2021, sold two pieces originally for 650,000, sold the next one for 635,000. And the market was actually pretty steady, steady and stable on them. It's limited to 150 pieces, green NTPT, um, and a perfect case size, RM29 is not too big. Here we have a piece that I took on trade a few months ago, um, made a pretty, pretty lucrative trade into it for $450,000. At the time, the market was around 470, 475. So I figured I would take the trade in and make a little bit of money on top after we traded out. Unfortunately, the market began to correct even further. So right now I'm willing to take $350,000 for this watch. That's a $100,000 hit. Unfortunately, that does happen in this business and it happens pretty frequently, especially when you're dealing with big pieces, but this is just the name of the game. And you take that money, you reinvest it and absorb the loss. Being responsible for all the purchases here at Luxury Bazaar on the watch side of things, it definitely comes as a stinger to my heart when we have to take a big loss like that. But at the end of the day, you take your wins with your losses and you keep moving forward. All right, so in last week's video, this is the watch that Adrian said looked a little bit worse for wear, right? Came in with some scratches, but came through for my boy Kevin. Got it polished up. The watch looks absolutely brand new. I mean, this is just such a value. What is it, five year anniversary? Five year anniversary gift to my wife. Um, watches was not her thing. Four months ago, she didn't even understand it. Now she loves it, she wants one, so we're surprised on her five year anniversary gift. But what do you think about this? I think it's also a good lesson for people who are like worried about getting their watches polished or anything like that. The, the point is, right, is we work with pros. We're, we're not butchers of watches, right? We're not gonna completely over polish or demolish your watch. All we wanna do is basically bring it to factory-like condition, right? And look, take a look so, at that. Look, like, so really by, look at this yeah, condition now. By polishing it, all we're essentially doing it to it is, is returning it to like new condition, really. She don't want it, I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on an article. Seven, oh, sorry, did you say you're working out? No, on an article. Oh, okay, on an article. That's never happening. What's the article? Uh, protect so lead market values. Remember the, those graphs I showed you? Yeah. The whole point of this exercise, right, was to show people the current watch market crash is not really a crash, it's a correction, right? And, and the way that we show that is through these graphs based on actual sales data. So the, the point is more so to give people the whole hard facts, which is actually a lot of watch watches have outperformed the S&P 500 over the last six years. Yeah. Have you looked at the recent auction results? I did. If you guys remember, I received two doll sets from my friend Eric from Bait of the FP Journe dolls. Everybody wanted the second set. I obviously kept one, so I ran a little competition. Remember the whole F1 car thing? Oh, that's oh. Cool. Yeah, Actually. So they were just telling me that it's going for like thirty thousand. Oh shit! Yeah. 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 It sold yeah. for thirty thousand dollars Swiss francs. So wherever it is in your place, make sure it's in the safe spot because it stares at me every morning. Yeah. It's like in my shelf, and I have but, it like this. But now, but now it's like staring at her with dollar signs. Thirty thousand, thirty thousand, thirty thousand. So yeah, wow. you guys. Next time, practice your. Uh, my race car skills? Yeah, race That's what you skills. want me to do after work? Uh, no. Practice my RC skills? Yeah, let me know if you want a set for 30K. <laughs> Sabina, how do you feel about that? I am putting my listing up on eBay. What's going on, guys? So, Peter here. 
Um, I actually just purchased this Rolex Submariner and the seller told me the bezel was not working properly. So I just wanted to get it on film and show you guys the repair process. Okay, so here we have a Rolex Submariner 16610. As you can see, it's moving back and forth freely. It should be clicking. So first I'm gonna remove the bracelet by pushing in both ends of the spring bars and releasing the bracelet from the lugs. Now's a good time to check the bracelet, make sure that everything is authentic. As you can see, the bracelet numbers, this is a solid end link watch. So first off, we're gonna remove the bezel. You can put something flat in between the lug and the bezel and pop it right off. So once the bezel's off, now we can remove the gliding ring. As you can see, there is no click spring. There should be a click spring right in this hole. So this is the piece that's missing. This is known as the click spring. While I have it taken apart, I'm gonna remove the case back and just make sure that this movement is authentic. Once the case back's off, it exposes the Rolex 3135 caliber movement. Here, I'm just checking that the auto wind is functioning properly and then that this is a genuine 3135 movement. So here, I'm just checking the functionality of the auto wind module. As you can see, when I move it back and forth, the reversing wheels engage. This is what powers the mainspring as you wear the watch throughout the day. Also, take note that this is a free sprung balance. These are some key indicators that this is a genuine Rolex 3135 movement. So now to put this back together, I'm going to reinsert the click spring and make sure that it's seated right under the crystal retaining ring lip. Now I can reinstall the flat washer or glide ring. Lastly, take the bezel, insert one of the grooves onto the click spring and push down. Now we can reinstall the bracelet. So after reinstalling the bezel, you're now done. The bezel is functioning properly. It's clicking back and forth into place and the watch is now good to go. In any market, be it cars, art, whatever, popularity kind of does this, right? Things come back in and out, this, that, and the other, but there's also those that are pretty stable, even key pieces, right? Price-wise, stay more or less the same throughout the time. What we picked out is what me, Marco, and Adrian both felt that may be sort of that next thing that people would look to. People want to look at things that are stable. And if you look at some of the stuff that's in here, these are your dress paddocks, right? These are your dress brigades, some longas and things of that nature. Those are the ones that have always been sort of even key. But there's also a possibility that when somebody, when the, a, the crowd turns to something else, it sort of becomes that next hype. It sort of becomes an up and up. The minute the spotlight comes off a product that was hot hype going through the roof and the prices tend to dwindle down and Hence, the watches become less popular because people are afraid to touch them, seeing them go for $50,000 and now for $30,000. Things have been even key. Instead of doing this as the market was rolling up, not doing this. So this is kind of what the idea of like Deals by Dave was. To highlight these watches, they have a lot of value and it have maybe either depreciated to the point where they're stable, so they're a great value for the uh, clients, or watches that are going to appreciate. So really watches that are you know, traditional, timeless, and present like a great value for the clients. Most of the watches in there, they pertain to one aspect, and that's obviously dress watches. However, I find dress watches to be very nice. You know, there's some Pateks in there. I believe there was the Blue Dial Patek that I picked yeah. last week. Um, definitely looking forward to learning more about those because that's not something particularly in my wheelhouse. Could use a little bit of knowledge to advantage, but uh, there's definitely more to learn. So much. You know, I'm definitely excited to learn about these pieces. There's a lot of stuff in here that I'm not too familiar with. Um, so I'm just looking forward to doing a deep dive and learning a lot about the history of these brands and uh, what these have to offer compared to some of the more hype pieces that I'm used to working with. Because with these, I don't really know much and I'm, I'm open to learn so I could target a specific clientele. Um, so I'm excited about that. And more importantly for me on the learning aspect, I could focus on a specific category. Um, since we're learning so much each day, this is huge because I could kind of just set in and focus on this rather than like, you know, looking at Rolex and then jumping over here. I could kind of, you know, learn this category. So is it the new hype watches? No, it's just a matter of people turning their attention to oldies but goodies, sort of those blue chip watches, if you know what I mean. All right, look guys, I think it's uh, become pretty obvious that one or two gotta go. Now we got Marco, base. Alex, it's been a real ride. Marco, it's been real. Thank you, thank you very much. Alex was moving to Canada. <laughs> Alex was moving to Canada. <laughs> no, but seriously, look, can we agree on the fact that there's been ample opportunity for them to sell watches Absolutely. at this yes. point, at this point, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm gonna start, the first person I have up is David. He sold one watch. 
Josh, since he's been here, he was actually the first one to sell a watch right away. Since he's been here, he sold two watches. Kevin Boise, since he's been here, has sold five watches. Mind you, he is the least experienced out of all of them. Peter has also sold five pieces, and we basically have a five to one ratio between two versus two. The reason Marco and Alex are in here is I want to get your hot take on all four of them. I'll just go kind of down the line. So Peter, first and foremost, I think very valuable asset. Is he getting eliminated right now or no? No, I would keep him. Okay, what about, uh, let's go to David. And David is a tough one. I think he has potential. Um, I think his approach is just a little bit wrong, right? The way that he's going about it is just a little bit wrong. Josh? I mean, Josh, again, that's, I think he, to be honest with you, he's, since he sold his first watch, he's basically rested on his laurels. He, he really has, I haven't been seeing him do as much as I thought he would. So like, for example, his Instagram went down for like two weeks straight and he just didn't make a new account. If I had an Instagram down, I would have made three new backups accounts and told you guys to follow. Yeah, he didn't lose anything by losing his account. All right, let's move on. Alex. Peter, obviously, like right away, he was extreme, like he's an asset. Like there's no... Yeah. He's performing, but I think uh, he can perform 10x if he just has like uh, a little more, I guess, following and pushing behind him. Because right now he's like he's not really present. Like he's not. He doesn't have like a big social media. He doesn't like he has his clients and he's just rotating through his. You don't have clients. to have a big social media. But I'm, what I'm saying is like I think he just. Well, well, for him he does because his whole entire client base is, is these guys that he flips stuff to. That's what I'm saying. He needs to get at the thing with him is is and it's an easy transition from the wholesale mindset. You know, he he was offering a, a watch to a client and he was naming all these nuances. Whereas if he was flipping an offer $350 profit to the wholesale guy, it makes sense. You can transition him away from that. Josh. Uh, you know, after after he told everyone that he was on 47th Street when he never was. That's that's what killed it for me, I essentially. Believe, I don't believe anything he says. Uh, let's move on, Dave. Dave, f he, dude, he's such a great guy. <laughs> I just don't think he has the, the right approach to It's the wrong approach. Great wrong guy, approach. But he, yeah, I think it just person. seems like he, he he's in terms, too much. In terms, of, in terms of you have four new people in the sales department, who do you gel with? Who do you not gel with? Think of a team and why. Pretty simple. Like the only two people that really are included in, not included, but they fit in in the way. Yeah, you could just talk to them as boys. It's, it's Kevin and Peter. Yeah. It, they, it, it just seems like they've always been here. Anna, I mean, for you, you can just quickly tell me because it, it for me, it's Peter and um, Kevin. I don't really hear about the other two. I know David comes up to me all the time. I know he's really trying, but I think he's just used to the retail environment when people are coming in. He's very presentable and he can speak very well, but he's not a grinder. It's it's. It's not a competition. So I actually do like all the guys. Um, I think they're all great and I commend them for, you know, entering this competition. Um, unfortunately, at the end of the day, um, we have to make our choice and um, look at the performance overall. When we started this whole thing, it took a long time for it to come into fruition. And by the time it came into fruition, the market took a shit. And then they came in into a time when a lot of business wasn't coming their way. But now the more I think about it, this was the right time for them to come in. Yeah, this absolutely. This right. shows, you know, what people are made of. What, what people are made of. All right, so look, Josh, actually, I got a message from Josh yesterday. Hey, Rami, well, sorry for the early text. I just found out one of my uncles is being rushed into emergency surgery. I need to take the next flight to LA to be with my family. What time is it? 5.24 a.m. What day? I just, what I want to know is like, because yes, David said that he like, was by the time David got up, like Josh wasn't there, which means he left the night before. You can't just book a flight like an hour or two before. Well, he texted me at 524 AM. I guess had to be planned out. You're not, you, are you not buying this? I, 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 I want to say that he probably like, after work or whatever, like he probably got on a flight and like, went to wherever he needs. Uh, but from what I heard, do you want to face him? I see what really see, see how he is. See if, if there's a Hollywood sign in the back or a Vegas strip in the back. Let's well, not and say we did. I will give him the benefit of the doubt. But you guys, are you calling Cap on that? So, so I looked on his Instagram. He says he's the CMO of this vape company. Uh, so I looked on the vape company. Um, funny enough, they're in a in a business convention in Las Vegas right now. So and he's there. I don't know if he's there. Like the, they uploaded one story of their booth in Vegas. Call, call the company. Ask for him. And um, 
it, I didn't see him in the picture. <laughs> guys, like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, remind me not to get on his <laughs> bad side. <laughs> if he's lying <coughs> about that, about God forbid a family member being sick and going to Vegas, he's going to hell. Something doesn't add up. Trust is the most important factor of anyone that steps foot through that door. I, I appreciate everyone's input. Thank you. I think it's pretty clear that we collectively made a decision. It's been about a month, a little over a month since these guys have been here. And look, at the end of the day, this is a competition. And as much as I would have loved to kept everyone here, at this point, we decided to eliminate someone. So, to explain why Kevin isn't here is because I gave him a bye week based on the fact that he came in much later in the game for the elimination. We had the hopes of everyone staying at the end of the day, but uh, based on certain things that we reviewed, we decided that it was time to eliminate one individual out of the group. The biggest thing that we're looking for is what Adrian said from the very beginning, right? If you remember the phrase, we're looking for killers, not kittens, and that's what stays true the most. I think the biggest show of that would be, number one to me, work ethic. Number two thing is how well you took on the resources that were given to you, the advice that was given to you, and how much you use that in order to be more successful. In a down market, this really shows uh, your character and abilities and creativity and willingness to perform. So there actually couldn't have been a better time to invite you guys in here. Whoever is going to go home today is, can be successful here, but it's just a competition. It's just a, you know, who's better. With that said, I am going to start with who is going to stay. And the first person to stay is going to be Peter. Go back to your desk. All right. Oh man, so here and I was first to stay. It's definitely a relief. You know, I'm looking forward to these next few weeks. It's not gonna be easy by any means. I'm just gonna keep on pushing, show that I need to be here. We're going back and forth, back and forth, and uh, ultimately somebody has to go, and the last person to stay is going to be.